Hey everyone, today I'm doing some more testing of the Asus Sabertooth P67 by popular request. So far I've done a review on this motherboard and I've also tested the thermal armor in a whole bunch of different ways because there was a lot of questions surrounding the thermal armor. Does it benefit the motherboard in any way? Does it benefit the temperatures? So far my testing has proved that it does but I haven't yet performed all the tests that I wanted to. Okay, the first test that I did was with the assist fan. The assist fan is a 50mm by 10mm fan that you can install onto the center of this motherboard. And what it does is blows cool air under the thermal armor. Okay, I'll just give you a look at that fan. It's just down there underneath the Noxua CPU cooler that I'm running. So as well as testing the motherboard with the assist fan and the thermal armor, without the assist fan and thermal armor, without the thermal armor altogether, I wanted to test this motherboard with a downward blowing CPU cooler. Because Asus says that the thermal armor will benefit the temperatures of this motherboard if it's used in combination with the assist fan or a downward blowing CPU cooler or I guess with both so that's what this video is about today I'm going to be testing the motherboard with the downward blowing CPU cooler and the assist fan and also just with the downward blowing CPU cooler and I'm also going to be including all my previous results from all my previous tests so first of all I'll give you the specifications of the test system so we have the Asus Sabertooth P67, a Core i7-2600K, 8GB of G-Skill Ripjaws X running at 78724CR2 1.6V, an MSI GTX 560Ti Twin Frozen 2, and I have a Corsair Force 3 60GB SSD as the boot drive, and a Western Digital Black 1TB SATA 3 drive and also an Animax Revolution 1250W PSU. The test bed is a Micro Cool Band Shadow 101. Alright, the downward blowing CPU cooler that I'm using for my testing today is the Noxua NHC14. I use this CPU cooler because it has two Noxua NFP14 fans so it has two 140mm fans blowing straight down onto the motherboard and it also only has the one set of cooling fins, the one cooling tower so there's not a lot of air resistance so there is a lot of air blowing down onto that motherboard which is what I wanted for this testing to get the you know the best possible result so the thermal armor has a, a large gap around the CPU and it's also hollow around the CPU so the air that blows down onto the CPU area can actually get under the thermal armor which is the same as where the assist fan is, there's a, there's a gap in the thermal armor to allow the air to blow underneath. So basically most of that air being blown down onto the motherboard is going under the thermal armor and it's being spread right across the PCB and it's coming out all around the edges where there's gaps in the thermal arm. Now I'm going to show you some screenshots of the test results. What these results are all about is the temperatures of the motherboard and luckily for this testing this motherboard comes with 12 temperature sensors across the PCB. It also comes with the Asus Thermal Radar software which monitors these temperature sensors. So what each screenshot includes is Prime 95. So for each test I run Prime 95 for 30 minutes large FFTs. It also includes the Asus Thermal Radar software and all the temperatures of the temperature sensors on the motherboard. So you need to look at those temperatures and can compare them in each screenshot. Okay, just two more things to take into consideration. 
for all of this testing the CPU was running at 4.8 gigahertz 1.43 volts and the room temperature was 33 degrees so the temperatures are a lot higher than they would have been if the system was running at stop clocks so for all the tests the system settings were the same and the room temperature was the same but if you think the temperatures are high just keep in mind the overclock the CPU voltage and the room temperature. The reason that I ran such a high overclock on the CPU was to put more pressure on the system on the motherboard and increase the temperatures and to open up the temperature gaps between the different configurations. Okay, so certainly some interesting results there. If you're wondering why the CPU temperatures are so much hotter when I'm doing the downward blowing CPU cooler testing, it's because in the other tests I was actually using water cooling on the CPU. So, and then when I'm using the downward blowing CPU cooler, that, that is a 4.8 gigahertz is a fairly high overclock for that particular cooler. That's why the CPU temps are so hot. Make sure you check out the previous videos I've already put the links up on the screen. Check out those previous videos for the, the past testing so that you can see the water cooling that I was using and get the details on that. Now, the results. So, with no thermal armor, you get better temperatures than with the thermal armor if you're not using any fans at all. Okay, so if you're not planning on using any fans, if you're planning on water cooling the CPU and not using the assist fan, then you might as well take the thermal armor off because it's actually going to heat the motherboard up. Okay. The assist fan does more work than a downward blowing CPU cooler because in the testing you could see that the temperatures were higher with the downward blowing CPU cooler on its own than they were with the assist fan on its own. So if you're going to get the best results out of the thermal armor then use both a downward blowing CPU cooler and an assist fan but as I said the assist fan does the most work so if you're not going to use a downward blowing CPU cooler it's not such a it's not really a big sacrifice because it, it only makes a you know a small difference so that sums up all the testing that I was planning on doing on the Asus Sabertooth P67 Please subscribe and click like and favorite if you want to see more. Thanks everyone.